Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. I've got a problem. Well, I've got lots of problems, but this one is one I think we can solve. It is a fishing pack problem. The problem is I found the perfect pack. I've been using it for years. I love it. I'm going to share that pack with you, but I can't use that pack anymore, or at least there's use cases I can't use it for. Why? Well, my back disagrees with this pack and it's getting a little bit tight, but I learned a couple of things this year and I am probably going to have to join team backpack for the 2023 season. I dislike backpacks, but I think I found one that fills the bill. We're going to walk down memory lane. We're going to look at all the packs. I've got them hanging out behind me that I've used over the years. Literally dozens. I've got a problem on that front as well. I'm kind of like Goldilocks when it comes to fishing packs. But I'm going to talk you guys and girls through what I liked about all those packs, what I disliked about all those packs, and maybe they're simple use cases that were I found useful over years of guiding. And then I'm going to show you guys the pack that I'm using for 2023. I'm going to show you guys why I like it, why I think it's going to fit my use case. Then we're going to rip it apart, and I'm going to point out all the things I wish it had and maybe in the long run the manufacturer will listen and we'll have those things for future renditions of the pack. As always, you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning with me on this little journey of uh, the pack problem that I have. And I think the best way to start out with it is talk a little bit about all the packs that I've had in the past so you know where I'm coming from. Let's start off with the oldest. And uh, yep, it is a fanny pack. They call it a hip pack because fanny packs sound weird. I actually love hip packs. I love them for one use case, and that is lightweight, minimalist travel. So if you have like a fly box, a gear box, a couple tools, that's all you're going to be carrying, maybe a water bottle, that's great, but don't overload it. Hip packs, fanny packs become a pain in the butt the second you start adding more weight, and we're always tempted to add more weight to that hip pack. So this guy I still break out on occasion. I just want to do a quick little jaunt, you know, out the door, grab a few key items, not have to worry about it. It's on my pack. It's awesome. I don't want to go much bigger than this style. I don't know how long that is, and I don't know which model this is. It's ancient, but this style of hip pack I think is really cool, but I don't personally like the big hip pack. They just seem to drag me down, and uh, this one is not going to be my pack for 2023. Okay, what else we got that's old and cool that I've used a long time? Well, this one. And this was an old version of a sling. This was a great pack. You can, if you want to cheat and go into many of our outdoor stores like uh, Mountain Equipment Co-op or wherever your local, you know, surplus slash mountaineering store is and find these relatively cheap. They're going to get you in the game at a fishing level and I really like them. This one's actually a really good size. You're not going to overload it too much. And that's important. Why? Because if you overload a sling pack, you are going to start hurting one shoulder. And this is the problem that I'm running into. Now, why are slings my favorite? Slings in general are. It's because I can put it on over the shoulder and I can sling it around in front of me. And here it is sitting in front of me and I can get access to all my gear. And then boom, it's out of the way. And I don't have to think about when I'm fishing. Big thumbs up to slings. This is not the sling to get. I'm gonna show you a couple that I absolutely love, the ones that I'm running right now. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the backpack. So slings, I got a bunch that I fish. I've actually got two of these, and this has been my daily driver for uh, the last six, seven years. This is no longer made. This is the Freestone, and this was the large version of it. And I love it, but it's a little bit big and it's a little bit heavy. Carries everything I need. I really like the size for that. And I love the access. I also love that this style has a tray that folds open. Let's see what I've got in here. Who knows? I haven't looked at this. Oh, a leaderboard. Uh, let's see what we can do there. Yep, that's a leaderboard with one egg on it. Oh, and a chewy bar. Cool. Uh, but you get the idea there. Lay it out. I can work on this really easily. I highly recommend slings. If you're young, your back doesn't hurt, and if you're smart enough not to overload your pack, I still think the sling is awesome. Just this, just to make note of it, I have two of these. Here's another one. I got one for fly fishing, I got one for gear fishing, uh, and so I can just grab it all and take it and not have to worry about bouncing back and forth. And then I got another one, and this is the waterproof version. 
And I actually really like the size of this. This one's an older one, but you can still pick this guy up. There's a newer material. It's a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more durable and a better zipper on it. But the problem with waterproof packs is you're going to be limited in the amount of carrying options and pocket options. Why? The zippers are expensive, just straight up zippers and seams that are waterproof make things cost a lot more money and are a lot more complicated to manufacture. This one's not bad. I do recommend uh, treating your zippers. You can see that goes reasonably quickly. And it has some storage in it. It has uh, a couple pockets in it. I like that idea. It's also got this guy up here. Not very waterproof. Stuff does get wet in this pocket, even though I think it's supposed to stay dry. But the long story short is I love this if you're in a saltwater environment. If you know you're going to be swimming or getting wet. I still break this out a lot. And I do like the size of this pack. I'll put the new version up here because I highly recommend it if you're a warm water angler. Again, hip packs are good for warm water anglers, but they're kind of low. And if you're like me who ends up wading across to different flats or through areas in the river that are, you know, really deep, uh, the hip pack just means you got to fight it up. With this thing, once it's on my shoulder, if I am wading deep, all I have to do is grab up here and go like this and I can walk and I'm much higher up off my back and I don't have to worry about it and then back it goes and I'm in the fishing game. So I can't talk enough about slings and with that in mind I want to show you what I think is actually the perfect pack right now. Well two of them, two different manufacturers as well. This guy here is the fish pond. I love this pack. This one's actually not mine. This one's from the store. This is a summit sling. I've lent mine out and I don't know where it is but if you stick with the rule of the sling, which is to keep it minimal, don't put too much on your back. This guy can carry like a small lunch, a water bottle, uh, no extra clothing per se. Yeah, you can jam it in there, but things get overloaded. But it has a really good working platform on it, which I love. I use this all the time. This one has fly pad in it or you can put whatever you want it's a tacky style one which i think is cool um, all your docking ports for your tools so you're set up and it's the perfect size super lightweight and easy that is the summit sling highly recommended and my other favorite and this one's a little bit more along my lines because it can carry a little bit more stuff but they were smart. Remember my old pack that I still use and still love? It's a little bit big. It carries everything I need, but it gets heavy. This is the replacement to that pack. This is the Freestone, and this is actually the brand new color that just hit. This is a, what do they call it? They call it a midnight blue. But again, we've got it, folds out, has some awesome options there, has our fly Velcroed in, highly recommended. You can pop this out and you're in the game. And then uh, a reasonable amount of good storage options here. And I like this one because it's a little bit more rigid than the Summit Pack. Uh, so you can get a little bit more in it. Good and bad, as we talked about, keep your weight down. This is my go-to pack. It also has a net holder in here, which I think is really smart. Comes right through there. You can see we stick the net in there. Highly recommend it. If I were going to pick one pack right now and I wasn't fishing in a ton of places that are really diverse, I'd probably grab this guy and be done with it. But we got to talk backpacks. I have gone down the backpack rabbit hole, so to say, multiple times. And I, I do think you should have a backpack for certain use cases. The first one I think you should have if you're a rafter or you love heading out, you know, on trips where things could get wet in a jet boat, in a boat is just a good roll top. But the problem with backpacks, especially a roll top, if you try to fish with it, aka this is what lives on your back with all your gear in it, you have to go to shore to get access to it. Sure, you can try to sling it around and get into it. It ain't going to work. And what you're going to find is you're going to take this pack off. You're going to put it on the shore. You're going to get your gear out that you want to use. You're going to step out onto the river. You're going to start fishing and you're going to start moving. Any good angler is not going to stand in one spot. They're going to be moving and I move way too much. I have a big case of ADD when I'm sitting on a spot that's not producing fish and soon enough I'm 350 yards away from this pack. I want to keep going. I want to see what's around that corner but this pack is sitting on the shore and I got to go back and get it. So this is awesome. I carry this with me when I'm rafting. It is a backpack. We can carry some great gear in it. This is an older model. There's two or three models out there on the market right now that are highly recommended. Get that in your kit it's good but it's not your daily driver what else i got oh i got one bag i want to share with you it has nothing to do with all this but it's super cool it is we call it the diaper bag this is another pack that i love and it's new for this year this is what do they call it bear with me they call it the river tech 
waiter tote. And we joke, this is basically a diaper bag. So all you dads out there, or moms, you want a diaper bag and a waiter bag? You got it right here. It's got the vents, makes the smelly stuff go away, both your waiters and or your diapering stuff. Uh, but this guy rolls out and you've got an awesome pad to work off of, but you've still got a area to store your waders, your boots. And heck, I, when I sometimes go, you know, onto a boat or boat fishing, I'll just throw like lunches and, you know, a few beers or whatever I may want to take on the day in here. And on my way to the races, these are actually fairly cost effective. I want to say they're a hundred bucks Canadian, uh, so not too bad. And uh, this one is recommended again in your kit, but obviously not your daily driver. For now, what's the other style of pack that you might want to consider? Well, this is going down a different rabbit hole. This is the boat pack rabbit hole. And I have this guy. This is another relic that I absolutely love. And this is an old Sage pack. Sage doesn't make these anymore, uh, but Fish Pond makes a really good one. I really like the Fish Pond one. I believe Sims has a model this year. I'll put it up if they do, but the Fish Pond one right now is my favorite. And again, it's just like a soft bag with a hard bottom that's not gonna get wet, so you can throw it in the boat. Has access to all the tools that you need. And you use it sort of like a docking station when you're lake fishing around. So I love this pack. I still use it. I haven't replaced it. It works perfectly for my needs but not my daily driver when I'm out hiking on the river or heck, just going on an adventure trip where I don't know what the world is going to throw at me. This is the pack I'm choosing for 2023. And yep, it is a backpack. This is the new Freestone. It's brand new from the shop. I'm gonna buy it after I do this video. And uh, yeah, made in pewter. Why is this a better backpack than all the others? Well, they've gotten smart. They've kind of hybrid the sling benefits and the backpack benefits. First off, in this pack, it's super lightweight. Literally, it's, I don't even know the ounces. I'm sure I'll put them up here for details, but extremely lightweight, so I'm not gonna add more weight to my back. Lighter, actually, than a couple of my slings. Flip it around and inside, however, it's got a rigid back. And this was really important to me because I had a hunting trip this year and I got an awesome pack. Shout out to Kafaro Packs, they're amazing. Custom fit to my back. And I was way out of shape, but hiking up mountains, no problem with this pack. And about four days into hard hiking, straight up hills, I had a day where I was like, okay, we're not gonna go as hard. And I have a smaller sling pack. I was like, oh, I'll just grab the sling pack with you know, a few essentials and out we go. We hiked pretty hard that day, and at the end of the day, my back was destroyed. The next day, I thought, oh God, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Put on the much heavier, big Kafaru pack, and boom, the way it fit my back, the way it held my back, totally fixed the problem. I was fine, I went hard for another four or five days, had an awesome time, was super happy about it, and this is where the light went on for me of like, huh, I keep having this slight tight, not a bad back, but just a tight feeling in my back after every fishing trip. And so when we look in this guy, you dig right into there. It's actually got, I wanna say it's an aluminum stay, but it's a piece of metal running down the back of this and the back, the back is hard. So I'm pretty excited that this is gonna get some clearance off the back from me. It's going to be stable, it's super lightweight, but the trump card is this, we can use it like a sling. And this is where backpacks have always killed me. And I've said, I'm never gonna be on the backpack team, but we can put this on. I can double it up. I can load it down with a fair amount of stuff. It's not too big, so I'm not gonna be crazy. I'm not gonna be too much stuff in it. But if I wanna get access to my gear, pop this out and bring this around. And all of a sudden I've got access. Now I know there's some backpacks that do this, but you'll find that they're either too heavy, they're not really fishing related, and they don't have all the fishing stuff that I would love. What are the fishing stuff I love? Well, the first one is it's got tool ports on the front. These are pretty darn useful. And yes, so where it is, it's on this side. And so I've got a port up here for my tool. And what else does it have? Well, it's not waterproof. We know that it would be heavier if it were waterproof or have less options. This guy's got a flock. And I think that's pretty cool as well because that trumps my, oh God, it's pouring down rain problem. And it's attached inside the pack. This guy just folds over top. So like this. So if things are raining and I don't want anything to get wet, here it is, we're in the game and that's gonna be great. And I'm not gonna lose it as well because it's part of the pack. That's always critical for me. I lose these things when they're separate and they're kind of a pain in the ass. So all we gotta do is just jam it all back in here. So that's great. Now, 
Like I said, I've already chosen this to be my daily driver. I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna load it up in a second here, but let's poke some holes in it. Where am I unhappy about it? Well, the first one is I don't like the net storage options on this. And I'm gonna call Sims out on it. On your website, you have a picture of a dude with a net, but it's a huge net. It's like the, the handle's like four feet long and what they've done, and this might be an option if you've got a long net is they put the net through here and then they put it on their back. Well, that's gonna be rubbing against your back. I don't think that's a real net solution, especially if you're river fishing where even our short-handled steelhead nets wouldn't work that way. It's kind of a boat net that you would need for that scenario. So I don't like that option. Heck, if I bring out a big net, that's actually cool. I didn't know you could do that. I like the idea, but I don't bring a big boat net. I bring something smaller. And uh, so it does have the D-ring, which we need. We're gonna talk about how I'm gonna load that up with Fish Pond's net holder. But they do have this pocket here. And this pocket sorta got me wondering. It's a little flimsy. I'm worried it's gonna get dirty. I'm worried it's gonna get stretched and messed up. But I was like, is that what they expect as a net holder? There's no way to go through there for a handle. Now, I think I can make it work. I think I've got my net over here. Shout out to Moby. This is one of my favorites. This is the Brook. So it's reasonably long and fairly skinny, which I actually think will work for this. So we've got the pack. And I think with a little bit of finagling, I can just jam it in here if I don't want it flapping around. Now, luckily enough for me with the Brook, it fits. But this is a really skinny net. There's gonna be a lot of nets that won't fit in this option. And who knows if this will stretch out and be wrecked. Hope it will not. But that is an option, but I don't love it as an option. We'll see, this might work perfectly and I might just be bitching about something that's not there, but something to consider. The other thing I would have loved to seen is inside the pack. So if you guys remember my, you know, any of my sling packs, here's one we can take a peek. They've got a little bit of dividing options, uh, things I can pack in and cover. I'd love to have had another sort of pouch in here because it's basically empty there's some options up top that i could get into something i could slip some tip in because this is going to be a big area and things are going to be shuffling around in it and i don't really want to be digging down to the bottom i'm going to survive with it i think it'll be okay but maybe next year if sims wants to consider maybe a net option that's i think a little bit better than this as well as maybe just some simple tippet holders put into here just so i can have some separation of all my gear that'd be amazing all right, everybody, back in the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed the rant of me talking about packs for way too long. Uh, but the next video that's coming to you is going to be me loading that pack. And uh, we're going to do some shopping today in the shop. Going to pick out what we're going to put on that pack. And if you want to see that video when it comes out, I'm going to stick that right up here. I'm going to put some other videos right down here. And as always, you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.